Hey, what's happening everyone? Portu Gaming here. Welcome back to some more God of War. And in today's video, uh, I wanted to talk about the differences between Give Me a Challenge and Give Me God of War difficulty modes. Uh, I've done a playthrough already in Give Me God of War and I'm on a substantial uh, progress in Give Me a Challenge as a second playthrough. So I've sort of compiled a list um, in my experience of uh, the things that are that are new or different in both modes. So let's start off with Give Me a Challenge. Now in game, their description reads as a more demanding combat experience. Uh, but these are things I've noticed uh, so far uh, in my experience. So the first three things, uh, enemies gaining a power level boost, the health bonus, the damage and the status effect damage, they're the sort of usual things I guess you, you'd expect um, devs to do to increase increased difficulties and you see that in other games as well. Um, same goes for the enemies having boosted uh, defense values. Um, they are, I've noticed, harder to stun and, and they have resistances against other elemental types and other ailments as well, like blinding for example. Um, next up, enemies uh, resistance to ranged attacks. So again, they goes to damage reduction in, in their defences. Um, your range attacks just seem to, I guess, do less damage all around. Um, also traces runic summons. So the, the actual status effect damage build up is slower, I think I've noticed, um, when you use Atreus's runic summons specifically. Enemies um, tend to be more aggressive, definitely. Uh, the frequency of attacks uh, increases I've noticed um, as well as uh, they don't sort of wait around for you to do uh, to do your actions they, they, they'll they just attack regardless okay next up that sort of ties in to the next point actually where enemies absorb impact from your very basic attacks so your basic attack strings your your light attacks or your heavy attacks uh, they, they won't sort of display many reactions to those attacks so you harder to stagger enemies harder to make them flinch uh, and harder to launch them and lastly uh, permafrost and immolation that definitely takes a bit more time to to build up not, not a great deal of more time um, but you definitely notice well i've definitely noticed a difference in uh, between them actually building up uh, on the gauge itself. It's a little slower, definitely. Next up, Give Me God of War. An in-game description reads as um, as difficult as possible, requiring godlike reflexes and strategy, I think, <laughs> if I remember rightly. Um, but uh, the rest of it's how uh, you can't change difficulty uh, mid-game. But, um, sorry for the big... Uh, wall of text but yeah there's, there's a fair few differences here um, so first up includes all the adjustments made to give me a challenge difficulty mode uh, most enemies power up and turn elite after taking damage this is this is all the new stuff i want to talk about this in a little more detail after this but yeah enemies after certain rules uh, will turn elite streaky purple eyes and gain uh, one power level, so uh, purple purple um, health enemies. So you, you've seen them, I'm sure. Die to a lot of them as well. I have definitely. Uh, enemies take slightly less damage, so again, sort of par for the course. Uh, the hardest difficulty. Um, enemies deliver much more status effect damage. Status effects last longer and are more potent. So over a shorter period of time, you will take a hell of a lot more damage. Uh, and that's something that is noticeable. Okay, enemies gain additional defense boost from resistances, uh, something you'd expect, but they're actually harder to uh, launch, stagger, knock down, push back, uh, those sort of hit reactions, as well as having high resistances to um, the other status elements and elemental damage. Right, enemies take slightly increased damage in mid-air, and I noticed this uh, fairly early on. Um, in combination with the Atreus's arrows in the sharpshooter outfit, uh, the damage you can do to enemies juggling them or in midair, it's, it's substantial, substantial, and it helps a lot 
in this difficulty if you can get enemies in that um, uh, sort of state or juggling state. Okay, enemies can um, can only be warping in the air. It took me a little while to figure this one out because it, it just wasn't working on, on the ground. And uh, especially if you want to grab that uh, kill labor, uh, this is a difficult thing to do later on. So enemies can only be wall pinned uh, once you get them in the air. So a little tricky to do that now in this difficulty. Uh, enemies can counter attack quickly. Uh, I noticed this one straight away. They, they, it, it's sort of like after your attack, instinctively they'll attack back. Uh, even when they block your attacks, enemies are sort of quick to sort of react to your your attacks as well as uh, coming back from being on the defensive themselves. So that's one to be wary of. Um, they will attack unexpectedly. Uh, Kratos is more precise on all attacks. It's a difficult one to describe actually. Um, so, say in the middle of a sort of a group fight, many opponents, many enemies on screen. Um, when you're sort of trying to attempt to change direction. You, I've noticed Kratos is a bit more precise in terms of where you're directing your attacks. Um, I, think, I think maybe even tighter hitbox on some of, some of the attacks. Uh, not too sure yet, but definitely feels like he's he's sort of better to control the motion. It's, it's, it's weird to describe, but um, it, it, you can feel it in combat. Uh, Kratos will enjoy fewer power level advantages so yeah the the, the the differences you see in power level between players and enemies and stuff any differences that brings stats wise uh, even though I still believe this is a pretty much player driven game stats are there supplemental they do, they do help help out but there's fewer advantages to gain from it um, cross status effects reduce iframes on evading so that's just a single press evade not the, not the dodge roll but on evading uh, definitely been times where I've been frozen and taken damage where I shouldn't have on an evade. So that's something to be wary of. Poison status effects reduces Kratos' power level. Um, yeah, definitely definitely one that uh, was confusing me for a little while until I noticed uh, every time I was poisoned, dead gain a power level. Wouldn't gain any health, but just a power level. And uh, the health bars would change colour. So definitely a, a tricky one to deal with if you're poisoned. Spartan range, uh, rage gains are dramatically reduced, so uh, the bar builds up uh, noticeably slower. Health pickups reduce status effect damage. Um, so yeah, things like poison and, and, and burn damage will actually wear off quicker, uh, chunks of it, when you pick up health. Parry attacks are less effective, so they, they basically do less damage, nothing different me mechanically, they just do less damage. So that's it for the differences in the difficulty modes. So you can see the the, 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 the reason why they call modes is it's a lot more going on under the hood than just the damage and health upgrades. A lot more vulnerability to use the player as well. So next up, elite enemies. I want to go into a little bit more detail about uh, elite enemies. So the first bunch of things you see on the list here uh, are things that um, I think will apply across the difficulty levels, but definitely apply from the jump from give me a challenge for example to give me uh, god of war so elite enemies are more difficult to ledge the, the more difficult to knock back of course more difficult to attack and knock off um, cliff sides and environmental attacks and that sort of stuff they're more resilient to Atreus' stun damage from light arrows so it will take a bunch more arrow shots to uh, inflict uh, a stun status effect on enemies they will inflict more status damage on you as a player and that applies to some more frost damage more build up of burn poison blind that sort of stuff um one thing i have noticed uh, specifically actually will give me god of war uh, difficulties the ai adjustments for some enemies I've noticed the um, tactile wounds for example so they, they just stick out in my mind uh, they can interrupt your your attacks with a quick sort of um, spinning counter attack of their own. I haven't seen that on the other difficulties. Uh, so definitely want to be wary of I'm sure there's there's more. But I don't think that there may be subtle little things like timing changes or perhaps range or distance changes. Um, but there's definitely a, a bunch of things going on with the AI. Um, enemies 
uh, elite enemies can't be frozen uh, for too long. That's something I've noticed where when they're throwing the axe, for example, or even doing uh, elemental damage, they will freeze and they'll stay frozen. But it won't be for a long period of time. Not enough, well, just enough for you to be creative with a short number of hits, but nothing where you can go crazy, you know, and just sort of chain together 10, 15 sets of moves or something. You just can't go for that long. Uh, they'll snap out of the uh, status effect pretty much right away. Um, increases in resistance to stagger, flinch and reaction. So they're, they're, they're tougher to knock back, like I was saying, they're tougher to launch, tougher to interrupt. Um, so it will seem like they have high biome armor, for example, and generally um, don't suffer from many hit reactions from being hit by one of your attacks. Um, the next two, the last two, are specific to give me God of War difficulty actually. Uh, elite enemies are definitely, definitely more aggressive. So again, there's a there's an increase in frequency of of attacks uh, I was talking about before, and it's noticeable from from the get go. Um, when they turn elite, I'm going to talk about that next actually. But um, enemies will gain a power level increase of one, uh, and again applicable to give me God of War difficulty only. Uh, and on the subject of um, turning elite, these are the sort of rules, so to speak, for turning elite. Well, the first one's not exactly a rule, it's a rest are though. So enemies already spawned as elite cannot turn again. So if they're already uh, purple health enemies or they're skull enemies or whatever the case is, if they're spawned as elite, they can't turn again. Uh, most enemies can turn elite at a certain threshold. Uh, of course, this applies only to give me God of War uh, difficulty. But I, I, I don't have the numbers, so I don't know what that threshold is. But it, it seems or it feels like it's around the 70-80% health mark. So, you know, in a way, I guess, you could chip away everyone up until around 80% health, for example, and hopefully get away with it. Uh, Next up, the process of turning elite can actually be interrupted. Um, I mean, most of your hardest hitting attacks, Atreus's arrows and the axe ranged attacks, it can interrupt them from what I've seen. Uh, I don't think anything else works. Basic attacks, a bit hit and miss. Um, they won't always work. Uh, weaker enemy types can turn instantly. So yeah, they, they don't wait until they're damaged or uh, go down to a certain health threshold. Um, not dra uh, draugers, but um, tatsa worms, or wolves, uh, those sort of enemy types. They, they can they can turn instantly, uh, but it is one at a time from, from what, I've, what I've seen, what I've noticed. Um, and reaver enemy types. Um, so the guys that explode after you kill them. Um, on death, they will turn all surrounding enemies uh, elite. Um, and I've seen that happen. Uh, it can be quite scary. Uh, so yeah, there's something to be wary of there. Uh, next up, Fierce Ogres. So, you know, the ones that are sort of... not have a red shade, but they're... I think they they look a little more... Well, they're much more aggressive, but they look aggressive in terms of red tint, I think, the eyes and... Things like that. So the fierce ogres and Valkyries, they can turn elite at low health, and I think on some of the failed Valkyrie runs uh, I've up uploaded up on the channel, I think a few of them uh, th you see the Valkyries actually turning. So all of a sudden they'll have streaky, you know, streaky um, uh, purple eyes and stuff. I, I don't think that that may not be an exclusive thing to give me God of War. I'm not too sure. It may happen and give me a challenge. Um, lastly, all nightmare enemy types, trolls and ancients, they definitely don't turn. Um, I'll be asking a bit, a bit too much of players if they, if they turn as well, but no, they, uh, they definitely don't turn. Right, almost there. Um, finally, hidden mechanics. Um, I don't know what else to call this actually, but uh, I'll just call it hidden mechanics. But this is something I've noticed that I'm sort of just getting my head around now but um, trying to come up with terminology for it. So enemy resistance and player force. So enemy resistance um, 
it, it's something that enemies have that dictates how resistant they are to hit reactions. I'm not confusing myself, you know. So it's it's yeah how resistant they are to to launch, to to stagger, uh, to knock back, to bouncing off the ground, for example. So those sort of things. And player force is something I've tried uh, word I've tried to use uh, to describe um, how Kratos's attacks can hit through the enemy. You know, actually making them attack, even if they're regardless of whether they're, they're attacking or not. But you know, you could say super armor or poise could be another word for it. But uh, it's, the, it's the impact of your attacks breaking through enemy attacks to make them react or to break that resistance they have uh, to to uh, hit reactions and, and there are things you can use to manipulate that so for example frost and weaken status effects lower enemy resistances so it makes them makes it so they are easier to launch easier to um, open up easier to combo for example uh, when they're inflicted by one of those status effects or both of them Certain uh, strength perks and mercs as well boost um, Kratos' force, so that, that thing about hitting, hitting it through enemies. Um, permafrost immolation, that can also boost player force. So once that's active, uh, notice again, sort of feels like there's, there's super armor, or you've got you know, incredible poise, for example. Um, and it also applies to Blessings of the Frost, great runic attack. So you can pretty much go in, go to town, just mix up. All your all your attacks, combo them, chain them in, just go nuts. Um, lastly, I, I may do a video on this actually, uh, sort of trying to give a live demonstration of it, I guess. But to stacking player force and lowering enemy resistances seem to be one of the keys to success, uh, especially at higher difficulties, because it causes enemies to react and it opens them up for just massive chains of hits, massive variety of combo attacks, uh, different types of attacks all just chained together. Um, and really, really fun once uh, once you sort of understand uh, the mechanics and the systems that play around that as well. But I may do another video on that. Right, I think we are all done now. So thank you for bearing with me throughout that video. Um, hopefully it was informative. I hope it gives you guys a sort of better, better understanding of the difficulties and certain things that you may have noticed in your own playthroughs as well. Um, so I really appreciate that. Thanks for watching uh, and I'll catch you later for some more God of War.